in this lecture we are going to discuss some theories of social change now if you've seen my lecture on social change you can easily understand what is this social change important thing to note here is social change is always very gradual it does not happen at once it takes time and a lot of factors are associated with what uh, changes that take place in the society here are some of the definitions you can take a look now there are two aspects of the social change at macro level when we talk about how changes affect the society as a whole what happens there are two kinds of changes structural and cultural structural is what now take an example before industrialization the society was very simple after industrialization we have become more consumer oriented we have become more profit oriented we have a certain standard of living and many more things associated so these are some of the structural changes and it affects the society as a whole it does not just target some members and leaves the others no but it affects society at a very large level now what are cultural changes cultural changes are when the changes are in the deep rooted belief system of the society for example when uh, the deep rooted system could be that women will not go out to work but in the society that we live in today it is extremely common for women to drive to go to work and to do many things on their own so women empowerment can be an example of cultural change now let us discuss uh, is modernization a social change yes modernization is a social change because with modernization there are many factors associated like education change in belief system change in values change in perspective so these are all the structural changes on the other hand when we talk about occupational mobility what is this it is a cultural change because people are now in order to survive in order to earn in order to come out of their comfort zones they are trying to get more and more into different kinds of occupations irrespective of the caste and perhaps the class they belong to they are now uh, people are more eager to change their cities there is migration so all of these things these are social changes now let us talk about evolutionary theories of social change as the name suggests we have evolved right so we'll be discussing two types of theories one is unilinear that is which goes on one track only single and the other is multilinear where the uh, changes can be multidimensional so the evolutionary theories they are based on social evolution how come like biological evolution you must have studied how we were uh, how do we evolve like it's a cell or it's an algae and then something 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 and then humans evolved so this is what a, a social change is when we talk about in terms of society what that it was a very simple society and now the society is very complex so a single cell that was very simple now it is uh, you know it has changed to multicellular organism so it is now a complex body in the same way we can talk about society simple to complex it is a gradual change you know nothing happens fortnight or overnight it took a lot of changes a lot of factors and then the society it evolved from simple to complex now the evolutionary theories they view social change as a sign of development because when you are changing the perspective or ideas the things that are happening in the society it is a sign of development they have also compared society to human beings like i just discussed human beings are also very complex be it mentally or physically so the same way societies are also becoming very complex and also there is an interdependency like uh, we are interdependent on our organs are interdependent on each other my body cannot function if one organ of my body stops functioning no i need all of them in the same way we need all the factors that are there in the society because there is an interdependence they also believe that with this social change we are reaching new heights of civilization greater independence formal control 
But the problem here with the evolutionary theories is that they have described social change but have not given a good explanation of it. Because at that time of uh, at that time when the theories were written, these theories, there was not enough uh, scientific data. There was no reliability on the facts. It was not on experience. It was merely on experiences. You know, there were no facts. Therefore, there is no explanation but only description. Now, coming to the linear theories of social change, as the societies developed, the researchers, they started supporting the multilinear theory of social change and they rejected the comparison of society to living organisms because as the societies evolved, the researchers, they also evolved. They also started using new methods and techniques and a systematic way of change was to be studied in a systematic way only, right? So the direction of change is always upwards. The sequence of development in linear theories is in one direction and it is always forward because they're saying we're not going backwards. We're going forward with the change in factors of social change. For example, First, we had telephone, then we had video calling, then we had internet, we have social media and many things associated with it. So we are going in a forward direction only. The speed of change is slow at first. We just discussed this and the theories are based on experiences and not on historical data. Whatever the experiences they were gathering from the time when the social changes were at the peak, the theories were based on the same. Now, they have also said that change in one society is very often and very quickly adopted by the other societies. So, they say that change in all societies will be the same. Why? Because they are adapting very quickly. Nobody wants to lag behind. If, if one society is progressing, the other society wants to progress at a very fast speed as well. Now, let's understand what did August Combs talk about this. So, he has talked about law of three stages based on man's intellectual development. So, in older times, we were not very intellect, intellectual or rational. But as time passed, man also progressed. So, he has talked about a progressive evolutionary model where man has you know, taken a path from theological to metaphysical to positive mode. This is where there was, at first there was just the belief on God, but then man started thinking, he started using his brain, he started using rational concepts. So, he moved from theology to positive mode. Positive mode is when everything can be treated as false or true. I have to know, if someone tells me, that God exists, I will not just believe him. I will try to gather all the facts, information, do my research and then only believe it. So I need some kind of scientific evidence. He said that the basis of this development is intellectual development of humans. He has also talked about social statics and social dynamics. When the change is static in nature, does not change a lot, that is static, but when the society is changing at a very drastic speed. There is a lot of change that is social dynamics. Next is Spencer. He has talked about social Darwinism much like in biology that is survival of the fittest. He has said that society is equal to an organism where each of the organs are dependent on each other and society also functions in the way the bodies do. Like it is, it has gone from simple to complex. As the needs of the society's growth, the interdependency also grows and the complexity increases. He also said that intellectual development is the basis of evolution of the society. He said that evolutionary theory in the real and material world needs to be developed and studied upon. According to him, the stages of evolution of societies are simple, compound, doubly compound and trebly compound. He criticized the ideas of Pen, uh, sorry, August Comte, like he talked about theology and all, but he said, no, it is simple. And then it begins to uh, turn into compound society. Next is Tyler, who said that the cultural development is because of the growth of arts, scientific knowledge, etc. that took place in the society. And this is what led to the cultural development because the deep rooted ideas, they started to uh, change with scientific knowledge and 
scientific temperament. He has talked about three phases of evolutionary sequence that is animism, belief in spirit, polytheism, belief in several gods and monotheism, belief in one god. Next is F. Tonys. So if you remember my lecture where we talked about Durkheim's uh, you know, organic solidarity and mechanical solidarity. It is much similar to that. He has talked about Gemeinschaft and Gesellschaft. In Gemeinschaft, the society is very small and homogeneous. Informal relations are there. People talk to each other. Uh, you know, they are very familiar with each other. And there is a role of relig uh, religion as well, where because of this religion, the they have this kind of solidarity and they are in touch with each other. This is also known as essential will. Jesle Shaft on the other hand is arbitrary will where the society is large and heterogeneous. Because of this complexity, the degree of conflict and stratification is also very high. There are very formal communication and no role of religion. Very, very low and not significant role of religion is there. The evolution of society is from Gemeinschaft to Gesellschaft, that is small and homogeneous to large and complex or heterogeneous society. Now let us discuss some questions. First is identify the author who has concerned himself with the study of religion and social change. So Max Weber is the author or the thinker who has talked about both the religion and social change. If you remember Protestant ethics, you will be able to understand this question. Second question is, the industrial revolution exemplifies the kind of social change described as. So, the changes that occurred after industrial revolution, they were slow at first, but then they started happening at a very high and continuous rate. So, the answer will be A, continuous. Question number three, which among the following is the oldest view of social change? So, the answer will be evolutionary because... Why? Because at that time there were no facts. They were based on experiences and evolution of social sciences or the evolution of changes that were taking place that was studied when we talked about evolutionary social change. So I hope you got this lecture. Thank you for watching.